guys welcome back happy saturday i hope you guys are doing awesome you're having a really good weekend i hope you had a really good and blessed work week i know i did it was crazy busy but it was really really awesome um i work for an oral surgeon so um we had a lot of patients that needed to be squeezed into appointments that were already on the schedule and it was just really really busy but it was a, a really good good work week um, I'm so grateful guys and I'm sure all of you are as well for those of us that are able to continue working in the midst of a pandemic there are so many people that are still laid off unable to work so many people that have lost their jobs that are trying to find work um, so for those of us that are working whether it be from home or whether it be like me uh, where you're actually able to go to a physical building what a blessing we need to be so grateful to abba for um providing and and allowing us to continue to uh, have our needs met um, so before we dive into uh, what i want to share with you guys let's go to the lord in prayer abba we come before you today just thanking you so much for your provision and the way that you provide for us abba we thank you so much, Lord, that your word says that you shall supply all of our need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, for showing your faithfulness to us time and time again. I know I've seen it personally in my life um, on a number of occasions, too many occasions for me to count, Lord. So we thank you, Lord. We ask that you would uh, just bless this time and um, I ask that you would anoint me, you would fill my mouth with your words, Lord Jesus. I'm asking that you would give each and every one of us ears to hear from the Holy Spirit what it is that he wants to speak. We ask that you would accomplish your perfect will, Lord God. You would just have your way, Lord. We thank you, Father, for who you are, the fact that you are God, you are sovereign in the midst of everything that is happening around us, in the midst of everything that's happening, not only in our world, but in our lives, Lord God, personally, you are still on the throne and you are God, and beside you there is no other. So we thank you, Father, for who you are in our lives, Lord Jesus. For those that do not yet know you, God, I'm asking that you would um, search their hearts, Father, that you would reveal to them their need for you. They would uh, understand that they are empty, and they are, lo they are lost, and they are searching, and they are hopeless apart from Jesus. Help them to come into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and they would make him Lord of their lives right now, Lord God. And we give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So guys, um, repentance is deadly to our flesh. God's word says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sin separates us from God. And so as, as believers, it is our... Um, I don't want to say duty, but we should make it a practicing habit uh, to, to repent. Whenever we sin against God, it separates us. It breaks fellowship. We have broken fellowship. And so we cannot um, continue on in that way. We can't continue thinking that we're going to pray and we've offended a holy God, um, that we're going to get in his word and he's going to open our understanding when we've offended him. So repentance in the life of a believer is a must. And as far as those of you that do not yet know the Lord, that is the absolute first step to coming into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. That is repentance. It is acknowledgement of your sin. It is acknowledgement that you have broken the commandments and the ordinances and the laws of God. And uh, it's acknowledgement that apart from him, you're you're sinful apart from him you're unrighteous and you're wicked and you need his righteousness um it is it's a must for both for the the unbeliever and for the believer repentance is deadly it kills the flesh it kills our sin it keeps our hearts supple and soft before the lord um, so a few days ago, I had I didn't I hadn't heard of this guy before, but I'm sure some of you have now. There's this huge scandal with this guy uh, Jerry Falwell, and I call him Jerry Falwell because what he has done is just so foul, um, and his wife as well. And so uh, he is the president. I'm not sure if he stepped down already. I know he was going to step down. But he is the president of Liberty University, um, the largest Christian university in all of America. And um, God's word says, whatever is concealed will be revealed. So people all the time, they think that when years and years go by because the Lord has not uncovered their sin, that they're getting away with it. But that's not the case. Um, years passed and now this is 
the lid has, has been, you know, lifted off of the, the reality of what happened. And um, I guess his wife was committing adultery and allegedly he was also aware of this and he was um, actually partaking in it. Um, he was allegedly watching uh, these sexual acts happening as they happened as his wife was committing adultery with a, a man that she met um, that was working at a hotel. So then um, this this is uncovered and then um, a little while later some photos started surfacing that he actually took Jerry Falwell, Falwell, whatever, um, of him and this other woman who is not his wife. I guess they were on a boat on a yacht and both of them were kind of hugged up on each other and they both had their pants unzipped. And um, he basically was flaunting this. Um, even, even if they hadn't done anything, God's word says to shun the very appearance of evil. So the fact that they're both hugged up on each other with their pants unzipped, it's an insinuation that something happened. And it's it's him blatantly flaunting sin, and it's it's disgraceful. It really is. It brings reproach upon the name of Jesus, upon the gospel. It's infuriating. It really, really does upset me. Um, something, guys, that we need to be in practice of is um, repentance. Um, when we don't repent, it creates hardness of heart. It causes us to begin to make excuses for our sin, of why it wasn't that bad oh you know god is merciful he'll overlook it all of these things the apostle paul said shall we continue in sin that grace may abound we need to be believers that make quick accounts with the lord we need to be people that realize what our sin does that it not only affects us it affects other people and it most importantly affects our relationship with the lord now more than ever we need to be in a place of right standing and continual and unbroken fellowship with God because we need to hear from him. We need his guidance. We need to know where to go, where not to go. We need to hear from him. And so the enemy would love nothing more than for us to remain in our sin so that we cannot hear from God. Um, repentance is is one of many marks of a true believer. If we are, we should be offended by our own sin, guys. It's so easy to look at other people and say, oh my gosh, look at the homosexual. Oh my gosh, look at the adulterer or the adulteress. Oh my gosh, look at um, this person or that person. We need to, before we're offended by anyone else's sin, we need to have, take offense with our own sin. And that's something that I actually have been praying and asking the Lord, Abba, make me offended by my own sin. Let it be so detestable and disgusting that I don't want to do it, do it again. And I realize that as Christians, we are not sinless, but we should sin less. We should not make a habit of sinning against God because he's merciful, because we will be judged for our sin, just like the world will be judged for their sin. Um, God is not going to overlook our sin just because he's merciful. We should make it, like I said, a habit of repenting and staying in a place of, of uh, right standing with the Lord. So guys, we have gates, um, and I'll explain that. So we have an eye gate, we have an ear gate, and we have a mouth gate. And I want to ask you, would you allow uh, an enemy, if you had a gate, a barrier around your home, or a gate in front of in front of your family, would you allow your enemy to tear down the gate to gain access to you or your family? No, no one in their right mind would. So why is it that we willingly allow things into our ear gate, into our eye gate, and into our mouth gate that are displeasing to God, that give the enemy access to us? We allow things into our eye gate. We watch movies that, uh, that completely... Um, that are contrary to God's very nature, um, we, and we call it entertainment. We watch things that, uh, movies that, that blaspheme the name of God, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, mock God. We watch movies that, that use his name in vain, GD, every other word, um, foul language. We watch movies that um, glorify sexual relations outside of marriage. I mean, we watch these things and we call it entertainment. And then we think, oh, well, I'm spiritually mature, so that's the reason why I can watch it. It's actually the spiritually immature that partake in those things. It's not maturity at all. Just because we have liberty in Christ does not mean that we should 
um, take it for granted or take advantage of it. Liberty in Christ is not for us to do or say or watch things that God opposes, that God himself hates. Um, we read books that are, are displeasing to God and we make excuses for it. We listen to music and say, well, I, it's not the words that I'm listening to. I'm not listening to the lyrics. It's just the beat. I like the rhythm. I like the beat. Um, or we say things that are not edifying. We say things against other people that are not pleasing to God. We slander or we gossip or we curse and we make excuses for it. Why are we making excuses for sin? We need to stop. The world is looking at us and you know, I looked at this example and I, I actually watched um, a video, I think CBS News did a video uh, about the whole uh, scandal and just reading the comments, it was so heartbreaking because so many people were saying, see, I knew Christians were hypocrites. I knew that they were just fake and they try to, you know, judge other people and they themselves don't even live by the standards that they call other people to live by. It was heartbreaking, you guys. And so I personally want to challenge you to be above reproach. It's not only the lives that we live out in public, it's what we do in secret. It's the things that we think no one else is gonna be aware of, that no one else is gonna know about. We need to be living in ways that allow our light to so shine that men and women will see our good works and they will glorify our Abba in heaven. We need to be living in ways that the accuser of the brethren, which is Satan himself, cannot come and accuse us. We need to be living sin less lives. And I know that um, we're not sinless. Uh, like I said, we're sinning less as believers. We're not sinless. So when I say we need to be living sinless lives, what I mean is we need to be living in such a way that we realize that God, his eyes are beholding every aspect of our lives. We're going to stumble. We're going to fall. We're, we have a, sin, a sinful fallen nature, which is why we take on the new nature in Christ and he empowers us to overcome our sin. But um, I'm going to end this video, guys. I just wanted to come on and challenge you to allow repentance to become an everyday thing in your life. When you know that you've sinned against God, don't repent and then go back to it or repent and go back to something different. We need to be living above reproach because whether or not the world sees our secret lives, God does. And so we need to be watching movies that glorify him. We need to be listening to music that glorifies him. We need to be speaking words that glorify him. We need to be reading books that glorify him. Um, we need to be blameless. And if you're struggling with sin, um, I'm asking that you would get before the Lord and you would ask him to give you the power over sin because we cannot do it in our own strength. It does take the power of God to be able to do this. So please guys, as we're nearing the end, we really, really need to be um, striving to be righteous, to, to be righteous people before God. It's not only a testament to the world, but it's a testament to God's power in our lives. And um, he's coming back for a spotless bride. He's coming back for an untainted spotless bride. And so I'm asking you, whatever you do throughout your day, really stop and ask yourself, would this movie glorify my Father in heaven? Would the words that I'm about to speak, would they glorify my Father in heaven? The outfit that I'm about to put on, would it glorify my Father in heaven? The music that I'm about to listen to, would it glorify my Father in heaven? Everything that we do should be, should be filtered through the eyes of God. And we should ask ourselves, in light of Scripture, in light of how we have been called to live, or not live, are we being obedient to God? So I will see you guys in my next video. I love you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and be blessed. Bye.